fill me up with more of you and less of me, God. And that you have your way, God. Let me say what you need me to say, God. And do what you need me to do. Jesus faces Pilate, is what I have. So I'm going to come out of the New King James Version. And I'm going to read it first. Um, so now Jesus stood before the governor. And the governor asked him, saying, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said to him, it is as you say. And while he was being accused by the chief, the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. Then Pilate said to him, do you not hear how many things they testified against you? But he answered him not one word, so that the governor mar marveled greatly. Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to releasing to the mul multitude one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they had gathered together, Pilate said to them, who, whom do you want me to release you? Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Christ for he knew that they handed him over because of envy while he was sitting on the judgment seat his wife sent to him saying have nothing to do with that man for I have suffered many things today in a dream because of him but the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitudes that they should ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus the governor answered and said to them which of the two do you want me to release to you? Uh -huh. They said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, what then shall I do with Jesus who is called the Christ? They said to him, let him be crucified. Then the governor said, why, what evil has he done? But they cried out all the more saying, let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could not prevail at all, but rather that a tumult was rising, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this person. You see it. And all the people answered and said, his blood be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. So the title of this message will be Jealousy Kills. Mm. Oh my God. Right there. <laughs> Work on it, Shell. Work on it. Work on it. So we're going to take a dive into this and see, but I'm going to let you know what's going on here. All right. So Jesus at this point is now on an illegal trial. Not only was it the chief priests and the elders, there were also the Pharisees and the Sadducees that were coming after him. And they didn't decide to do this. Oh, this didn't happen overnight. They didn't just decide overnight. So if you go and you take a look back before this moment, every point where Jesus was teaching, there was a Pharisee trying to discredit him. Then there was a Sadducee trying to discredit him. Then there was a priest. Then there was an elder that tried to discredit him at every turn when he did a teaching. Mm -hmm. And Jesus cut them up. He cut them up. And I was like, oh, Jesus, get him. You know? So, but they couldn't take it. They couldn't take it. And then, but the, but the thing is, is that, and, and as they challenged who he was, in Rome, that's black, that's, they can't kill him for that. Right, right. So these, the people loved him. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. And he was feeding the multitude, healing, healing the sick, everything that they wanted him to do. So the, the, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, they could not just go ahead and arrest him when they were mad. That's right. That's right. They couldn't arrest him. So what they decided to do, because... With, they like, oh, we, they like him too much, so we can't, we gonna try and do something real quick. Mm -hmm. And what they decided to do, 
the enemy of my enemy is my friend because none of them like each other at all. So, you know, when someone is jealous of you and they can't take where you're going and they can't take what you're trying to do, they can't take it. So I'm going to go find somebody, oh, you don't like them, or you don't like them, you don't like them. So guess what? We're going to try and take them down together because they too powerful with me by myself. Right? So... I call it, that was a pinky in the brain moment. <laughs> you know. Because their plans never worked out in pinky in the brain, right? right? That's right. But little did they know is that as they were doing this, that it was all part of the process anyway. But you know, in Romans 8 and 28, all things work together for the good, right? Yes, yes. So, in that case, but the thing is, is that it didn't happen overnight. So uh, during this process of looking into this, jealousy starts as an insecurity. Uh -huh. And so that's, that's just a small thing. And it's when you start to look at yourself and say, I don't have this. I'm not this. I'm not that. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. I don't want this. And I don't, you know, you go through and you say, this is, I'm, I'm not worthy of this. But then when you don't take that to God and lay that out to altar, Come on. and you don't deal with that, it grows. Yep. Yep. So when it grows, it grows into what you would call jealousy. So once it grows into jealousy, then you start to look at what everybody else has and what everybody else is doing. And you are, why are they here? And that's what this, this is what jealousy looks like. Why are they in the front? Why are they here? Why are they up there praying? Why even I get a chance? <laughs> you don't deal with that and lay that out at the altar. That festers. And then that's when you get to envy. Envy is, because this jealous spirit is patient. It's patient. And envy is, I'm ready to go in for the key. <laughs> So, the Bible says there are many mansions, right? There are many mansions, and you say, okay, but I still want that. My mansion that you gave me isn't good enough. My mansion isn't good enough. I'm beautifully and wonderfully made. But you can do better. You know how much of a smack in the face that is to God? Yeah. What you did for me is not good enough. You know the hairs on my head? But I need some more work. Give me some wigs. Because that ain't good enough. My hair on my head ain't good enough. Give me some wigs. I'm guilty of it. Not on me. I'm up here with my hair. <laughs> and so, with that though, he, um, when you're worried about what someone else does and what somebody else has and what somebody else is doing, and, and the thing is, if you worry about what somebody else is doing, you can be praying and be on the watch. Because then you'll realize it's not your time yet. And there's a reason and a season for everything. Yep. And then you worried about what somebody else is doing and what they get into. But guess what? You wasting time and you killing your purpose because why you worried about what somebody else is doing? You killing something inside of yes. you. Oh my God. You are killing something inside of you. You have you will have blood on your hands worrying about what somebody else is doing because you missing your people trying to see. Let me see what you see. Let me. I don't, I don't, I don't want you to like him, so let me go and um find somebody else to let you see what I see. So that way we can go drink and go together. The same people that screamed, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. The same people said, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Were the same ones that screamed, kill him. Can you imagine how Jesus felt? These are the same people. I don't know, my daddy. You sure? And he did. He said, let this go. He asked. But then his flesh died. 
right and said, your will be done. So when you're in a midst of jealousy, we all are going to have to go through it. There is no way around it because Cain killed Abel. Joseph went through what he went through. He was betrayed by his own siblings and, they, and his dad thought he died. And he, so we're all going to go through a betrayal, but everything still works together for God to still get the glory. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I say this to say is that when Jesus was silent, when they questioned him, he only answered when they said, are you the king of Jews? That's the only time he answered. And that was because he stood firm on his identity and he knew who he was. And he said, and they thought it was blasphemy. Who do you think you are? But when you walk into your new energy, and you walk into your new season, you have to stand firm on who you are. And you can't move. If people are going to come, you can't move. You can't be shaken. You can't do anything but stand still and keep your eyes on the cross. Because when you're quiet, when people are talking about you, saying things that are not true, uh -huh. saying things that are not supposed to be said, uh-huh. And they try and dirty up your reputation. You have to stand quiet and let God speak. Yeah. 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 Because can't nobody fight for you like the Holy Spirit. Come on. Come on. Come on. Thank you, and if the people that are around and are seeing, just like how Pilate knew, he knew the truth. That's right. Yes, he did. He knew the truth. But guess what? Warning becomes comes before destruction. So his wife came and warned him and said, don't, don't, don't do this, don't do this. But he still did it anyway because he was worried about what the people thought. Yeah. So he had the option to do the right thing. Uh -huh. But Jesus, he was quiet. He was really, really quiet during this whole process. But because he knew that he had a purpose and a plan for everything. Uh -huh. And that he knew, like, okay, if you don't, you sure you want me to die? But do this anyway. I'm going to do it anyway. Uh -huh. And something had to die in him. I believe that something had to die in him in order for him to keep going. Because if it was me, I wouldn't have died for y'all. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
But if we stop being jealous and we're worried about ourselves and we do what we're supposed to do and we stay on our own lane, you know how much of a mighty church this would be? Come on now. There would be no such thing as small churches because if everybody did their own thing, we would go get so many people. Yeah. yeah, You will get so many people, but if we learn to love each other and do what we're supposed to do and encourage each other, instead of trying to down it one another, right. and we encourage one another, and we say, oh, you're back in here, let me pick you up and say, come on, let's go, keep going forward. Or oh, you're down, I'm going to love you anyway, and let's keep going. Come on. Yeah. 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 That's it. Because Jesus ain't leave us behind, so why we have to keep leaving people behind? And another thing I discovered was, he was kicking it with the sinners. So how dare we think that we just going to sit amongst each other and not go and get to sleep? Yeah. But the full body of Christ would be so mighty and functional if we just didn't be supposed to do.